Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we will be looking into the concept of Hadoop ecosystem. So basically this ecosystem is a platform which will provide different services to solve the big data problems. Now this ecosystem consists of some sections. The first section is the data storage section where these components are used for the storage which consists of HDFS and HBase. The second section is for the data processing. Now this contains the components like MapReduce and YAN which are used for managing as well as processing the data that is stored inside the blocks. Now for data processing apart from these two components other components for example Flink or Spark can also be used. Next section is of the data access. Now this con contains again some of the components for example Hive which is an SQL like interface. Next is Pig which is for the data flow. The next component inside the data access is Mahout which is again an interesting component. Next we have Avro. After that we have Scoop which acts as a RDBMS connector. Now this all together contributes for the data access. Now after this we have the data management section in which again we are having some of the components. For example Uzi which does the work of workflow monitoring. Next we have Chakwa which is actually used for monitoring and the next component Flume is also used for monitoring. After that we have the component called as Zookeeper which actually does the job of management. So altogether these components serve as an ecosystem which collectively helps to solve the big data problems and makes the task easier. So now let's see all of these components one by one. So first let's have a look at the HDFS component which comes under the data storage section. So we already have discussed about the HDFS component inside the Hadoop architecture. If you haven't seen the video then you can surely see the video in the big data analytics playlist. Now let's have an overview. So the HDFS component is basically used for storage of the data into blocks. Its master slave architecture has some of the components that are mentioned which is name node, secondary name node and the data node. As we have discussed the name node comes under the master part and the data node stores the actual data. The name node will control the data node and keep a track of it. Next we have the HBase component. Now this HBase component is nothing but a Hadoop database. So again it is used for storing the data but this time this stores the data which is of any type. It can be structured, unstructured or semi-structured. Now since the data can be of any type, it won't support the structured query language which is generally used for the structured data. Next it contains two components. First is the HBase master which comes under the master part of the architecture of it. It basically manages the other component and it also does the work of fault tolerance. If any fault occurs inside the system, it handles it. Next component is the regional server which is basically responsible for the read write operations. Whatever instructions are given by the HBase master the regional server will take that instruction and will actually execute it. Now since it stores all types of data hence it is called as column database storage. I hope you have got an idea of the data storage section. Now let's move on to the another section which is data processing. Now this contains two components MapReduce and YAN. I have already made two different videos on the detailed explanation of these two components. I will recommend you to watch it because there I have explained the architecture of these two components with interesting examples. So have a look at it. Now to have an overview the MapReduce is basically used for processing the data parallelly in distributed systems. Now this MapReduce component contains master slave architecture. Inside the master part the job trackers plays the role which is actually used for scheduling the jobs. Now these jobs are nothing but the map and reduce task that are submitted by the client. 
and the other part which is the slave part of the architecture contains the task tracker so this job tracker will assign the task to the task tracker which are associated with every data node and this task tracker will carry out the task on the data which is present inside the data node now let's come to the yarn section now as we have already discussed yarn is a resource management tool generally it is used for scheduling the jobs yarn usually makes the efficient use of all the resources and schedule the jobs in a systematic way now the yarn architecture contains these components which we have already discussed in detail in the previous video first is the resource manager which manages the resources next we have node manager which looks at each node and will keep a track of all the operations that are performed on every node next we have application manager which have a look at every application and manages the resources properly after that we have container which is nothing but the actual ram or cpus that are required for carrying out a task now that we are done with the data processing section let's come to the data access section now this data access section is kind of a lengthy section because it contains so many components so let's have a look at each of them one by one starting with hive so the component hive is basically used for processing the structured data which is stored in the data warehouse now you can see that when we are talking about structured data it uses a query language so it acts as an sql like interface but it's actually not sql now if you remember we have talked about one of the challenges of hadoop is that it requires developer to have a knowledge of java because the total file system generally uses java language hence to overcome this issue this hive acts as an abstraction which can be used to query the data in the cluster without having a deep knowledge of java or the map reduce now it uses the hive query language as i said it does not use the actual sql language basically it uses the hive query language for processing of the structured data i hope now the concept of the hive component is clear now let's come to the next component of the data access section which is pig so basically it is an alternative abstraction which is on the top of map reduce so it is basically a scripting language which is called as pig latin which can be used for data manipulation as well as the analysis of huge data sets easily now there are certain important as well as helpful concepts inside this particular language which helps to reuse the code as well as it has an easy to read and write syntax hence this is very useful to make the task easy inside the hadoop ecosystem now as you know after writing the code for compiling it we require the compiler or interpreter so for this particular language we have an inbuilt pig interpreter that runs on the client machine so that comes inside the package of this particular component now this interpreter which is present inside this package will help to convert the pig latin scripts and will submit those as the map reduce jobs to the cluster so in simple words we can say that it acts as an interface before submitting the map reduce jobs to the hadoop clusters so i hope you have got an idea of the pig component inside the hadoop ecosystem it performs a lot of data administration operations now let's come to the next component of the data access section inside the hadoop ecosystem which is mahout now this mahout is an hindi word which means an elephant rider you can see from the logo also that an elephant rider logo is given to it basically what elephant is here the elephant is the hdfs map reduce which are basically used for storing and processing the data you can see from the logo also that hdfs and map reduce has a logo of elephant so as you know that elephant rider is going to show the correct way to the elephant and makes the best use of it similarly mahout also makes the best use of the data that is stored inside this components and 
will automate the task. So basically it allows you to run the machine learning concepts to distributed computing systems. Now there are certain Mahout algorithms which are going to play an important role for automating the process. So ultimately what you will get, you will get intelligent applications which will be fully automated and it will make the task easier and even more faster than the previous one. Hence in simple words Mahout does the task of introducing machine learning algorithms inside Hadoop system and finally it will help to analyze the big data efficiently. So I hope you have understood the concept of Mahout. So now let's come to the next component which is Avro which is also called as remote procedure call. Now this Avro basically acts as a data exchange service and it provides the data serialization which means it has a rich data structure which has a binary data format and it is fast and compact. In simple words it is used for exchange of big data between different programs which may or may not be written in same language. Hence Avro plays an important role in the Hadoop ecosystem to make the task easier. Next let's focus on this component which is Scoop. Scoop is basically RDBMS connector which means it helps to transfer the data between HDFS which is Hadoop distributed file system and the relational database. Now we use Scoop for data transfer because it is very much efficient as it has the functionality of parallelly importing and exporting the data which makes it very much convenient to use. So with the help of Scoop you can transfer the data from Hadoop file system to RDBMS or vice versa. So now you can see that we are done with the data access section. I hope you guys have now got idea about the functionality of all these components inside the data access section. Now let's move on to the data management section and the first component inside it is Uzi which is basically used for workflow monitoring. Now it is entirely written in Java and it is a web application. It is basically used for managing the workflow in the Hadoop cluster. Remember that the workflows in Uzi are defined in directed acyclic graph. Basically Uzi submits the job to the server in proper sequence. That means the way or the sequence in which it receives the job, the same sequence it will follow to submit the task efficiently. Now I hope you have got an idea of the Uzi. Now after this we will move on to the next component which is Chikwa. So this component is basically used for monitoring. It is also called as the large scale log collection system because it has the records of each and every processing that takes place inside the Hadoop system. Now this functionality is used for monitoring the large distributed systems easily and efficiently. This component has a functionality of log indexing and log searching which makes it more faster to monitor and keep a track of all the processes that takes place inside the Hadoop system. I hope you have got an overview of this component that what it is used for. Now let's move to the next component inside the data management section of Hadoop ecosystem which is Flume. Again you can see that this particular component Flume is used for monitoring. So it is a real time distributed data collection service. Mark the word real time which makes this Flume component more important and popular. It not only collects the batch data but it collects the real time distributed data and it aggregates it that means it performs different operations on it and it can also move the data in an efficient manner. So ultimately it monitors the entire section. The reason why it is popular because it is way much powerful, reliable and flexible too. I hope you have got the idea of Flume. So now you can see that we have covered three components inside the data management section. Now the next component is Zookeeper 
which is used for managing. So before actually coming on to this component explanation, have a look at this. So till now, if you remember whatever components we have seen inside the Hadoop ecosystem, we're having this logo of different animals, for example, elephants for MapReduce and Hadoop file system, dolphins for HBase, pig for the pig component, honeybee for the hive component, turtle for the chikwa. So you can see that to keep a track and monitor all these components, rather all these animals, we require a zookeeper which manages all these animals efficiently and monitors them periodically. The same way the zookeeper inside this Hadoop ecosystem will play an important role for the managing of all these components. So you can say that it's a centralized service which is used for monitoring the configurations of all the components over large clusters. It also provides distributed synchronization which means it allocates a particular physical clock to each and every node and will keep a track of it. Also, it will categorize the time consuming coordination in the ecosystem of Hadoop, which means it will keep a track of the time that is required for a particular task to get completed by the components inside the Hadoop ecosystem. Now let's say a condition arises where some error occurs inside the system. So in that case, this zookeeper is capable of handling that partial errors. This makes it fault tolerant. And apart from that, it basically aims to make the system easier as well as more reliable due to all these features that it actually impacts on all the components inside the Hadoop ecosystem. So now I hope that you have got an idea of the zookeeper component inside the Hadoop ecosystem. So that brings us to the end of the explanation for all these components that are present inside the Hadoop ecosystem. Note that whenever you are going to explain, explain with all these four sections, data storage, data processing, data access and data management. Watch the video once or twice to make your concepts clear so that you won't get confused between these components. Make a note that all these components works in coordination to make the task even more easier and thus it creates Hadoop ecosystem. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you get any single doubt then you can post it in the comment section. I'll be happy to solve it and for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram thanks for watching